Good morning, Mike. How are you? I am doing well. Welcome to Views from the Ramp and welcome to all of our uh, viewers out there. Uh, this is a new version of Views from the Ramp. We're calling it Views from the Ramp Quick Hit. Uh, it's a quick less than 10 minute overview on an important topic facing our industry. Uh, before we get into it, I'm Mike France, the Managing Director of Safety and Training. Excited to be joined by Steve Berry, our uh, Content Manager and Training Extraordinaire here at NATA. Steve, uh, glad you could join us this morning. Good morning, Mike. You flatter me. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So our topic today is 139.321 compliance. That's that uh, fire safety training that everybody's so familiar with. And more specifically, the FA Advisory Circular 150-5230-4C, which is now a draft that's out for public comment. So we wanted to take a few minutes, do this quick hit to show you all what's going on and uh, give you a chance to weigh in with your, uh, with your thoughts as well. So before we actually jump into the draft and what the FA is doing, I thought it might be good to uh, take just a moment and Steve and I can kind of go through a little bit of what's in 139-321. Remember that that's a federal regulation. Um, just to review. So starting off, what does 139.321 say to the airport? Uh, three requirements that the airport has. Number one, set standards. Uh, and you can see the set of standards that are required for airports to set. Number two, they obviously have to require compliance for airport fueling agents. And then number three, assure compliance. That's the part uh, all of you out there are familiar with, that inspection, quarterly inspection, annual inspection, whatever it is, where the airport or the FAA comes around and uh, inspects to ensure that you're complying with their standards and, uh, and so on. So also there's the fueling agent perspective. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about what 139.321 means for a fueling agent? Absolutely. So fueling agent, most cases would be the FBO or really anybody who provides refueling services on the airport. They have three primary obligations. Number one is to meet the standards or comply with the standards right. that the airport set. Number two is to have at least one trained supervisor uh, who has been trained in an FAA approved supervisory program uh, for fuel safety and fire or fire handling. Hold on. <laughs> fire safety Close. and fuel handling. Got it. yeah there goes that extraordinaire part right uh so have at least one supervisor complete that faa approved course supervisory course and that needs to be done every 24 months so that uh supervisor then in turn can train other fuel handling personnel i.e line staff or that line staff can complete an faa approved course uh, that meets the standards for line fueling service um, and that's like the PLST that we offer through the Safety First program. All right, very good. So that's the uh, the uh, regulation probably presented in is as concise and brief a format as we've ever done it. Um, you know, if you have any questions on that, you can always contact Steve or I, and we could we'd be happy to work through the regulation with you and what's required. But let's move on now because this is safety first quick hit and let's talk about the draft advisory circular that's out there. Again, that's AC 150-5234C. So what's changed? Number one, some clarifying changes. Uh, the old advisory circular was a bit cumbersome and uh, it had material spread out in different sections. So the FAA has done some clarifying changes to make it simpler, easier to read, easier to understand. Uh, that's good stuff. They've also added training requirements for DEF uh, contamination prevention and misfueling prevention. Um, again, more good things, uh, things we're happy to see. They've added detail for hands-on fire extinguisher training. Many of you probably remember the CERT alert that came out a year or so ago, two years ago, and uh, provided a little bit more depth in what the FA was expecting out of hands-on fire extinguisher training. That has now been moved into the AC, not just in a CERT alert, but moved into the AC. And then finally, a simplified demonstration of compliance. And we'll get into what each of these kind of, a little bit more detail on each of these here in just a moment. Um, let's start off, why not? Let's talk about DEF and misfueling uh, prevention and what's going to be in the AC. Steve? Yeah, so unfortunately, as most people are probably aware, we've had uh, several fuel contamination events in the last few years. DEF has certainly gotten the most press because it's the newest threat to fuel quality within our industry. But of course, in, uh, issues like misfueling continue uh, to 
pl to plague our industry. I don't, I, I caution to use the word plague. It's, it's not that frequent, but they still occur. Um, and so the FAA, which we like, and you know, we're, we're glad to see them include, has now defined training requirements to prevent those types of events from occurring. So misfueling training needs to cover the components of a fuel order, which of course covers aircraft registration number, type and grade of fuel, and then quantity and distribution among the aircraft fuel tanks. And then DEF training, including the purpose and function of DEF, purpose, purpose and function of FISI, because of course the identified risk there is uh, folks have confused DEF for FISI, fuel system icing inhibitor, also known as Diagme or Pris. There's a half a dozen different names you could call it. Um, so the FAA is trying to address that issue by requiring this type of training uh, within the AC. I also wanted to bring some attention to our Save a Life Verify Fuel Type Initiative. Uh, this is something we are promoting within the industry to kind of bring this to the forefront. The idea of being a, a heart-shaped decal. Uh, we have these available in different sizes. You can put them on your fuel trucks and your self-serves. We also have these in key rings for your fuel truck keys. Really what it's designed to do is kind of pop out at you and, and, and say, all right, you know, am I really putting the right grade of fuel into the aircraft? So save a life, verify fuel type, not something that you're going to, you don't typically see a heart on a fuel truck. So we thought this would be a, a good idea to bring out to the industry. Uh, we've worked closely with Phillips 66 who brought us this uh, information or this, this initiative and we're trying to push it out to the industry. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Awareness is really what it's all about, right? Uh, that seems to be half or three quarters of the battle when it comes to misfueling uh, prevention and the Save a Life campaign, along with, you know, the FA, including this now in 139-321 training, uh, will go a long way to do that. Uh, what about the hands-on fire extinguisher training, Steve? A couple of updates there. Basically, just formalizing um, the, the previous update that came out through the... Help me out, Mike. Third alert. Third alert, thank you, through the third alert. Uh, so if essentially saying that the training needs to cover the topics you see there on your screen. And then there's some assessment requirements, meaning that you have to physically handle a fire extinguisher. You don't have to use live fire, they don't require that, uh, but they do use what they, they use the terminology realistic training device. And the goal, the FAA's goal is to have folks who perform hands-on fire extinguisher training to feel the weight of a fire extinguisher, know what it is to pull the pin, aim, squeeze, and sweep, or the pass method. Um, so they're really just formalizing the language from the CERT alert into the AC with the updates. All right, very good. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to kind of review is this change in demonstration of compliance. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the traditional 139-321 uh, certificate. You go to the course, you get a certificate, you show that in, that certificate to your instructor. Um, the previous AC had a lot of detailed language about what had to be on that certificate, the wording that had to be on the certificate, and so on, uh, which unfortunately creates a real odd environment in which inspectors start looking for conformance of your certificate rather than, you know, you know, are you doing a good job of maintaining compliance and, and so on. So what uh, what the FA has uh, offered out here, part of the draft, is a change that basically just says as an FBO or as a tenant fueling agent, your responsibility is to maintain adequate records to demonstrate the three things that are required. One, you have that at least one supervisor that has uh, completed the FA approved authorized course so that you've met the supervisor require requirement that your line service employees, that their training requirement has been, been met, and that you've had a continuity of training. That's a new term, continuity of training. We all understand what it means. It means we don't want big gaps in, in training. You know, if there's a 24 month window, you know, the next 24 months should start concurrently. You, you don't want three months in there where somebody wasn't trained. Um, I put together a little graphic here to help you understand what would it mean to be able to demonstrate continuity of training? So you got an individual that did a supervisor course, for example, in April of 2018. And then again, they do the coup supervisor course renewal in April of 2020, maintain that 24 month window. Um, so you can see the, uh, let's then assume that the airport came to do an inspection of June of 2020. All right, well, the airport is looking back 24 months to ensure that you should, were, were continuously trained at that time period. So they're looking back at that yellow bar to be able to prove that you've had 
continuity of training, you would need to maintain the records for the April 2018 training and the April 2020. That would show that anywhere during that time period, that individual was trained. So we're, uh, we're generally in support of all, all of the changes here. We uh, so definitely support the DEF and misfueling changes. We support the de uh, demonstration of compliance changes. As many of you are aware, the new Safety First Training Center and the utilizes a dynamic rating system, which uh, doesn't involve certificates, but rather a report of compliance. Um, so this actually fits very neatly into what we're doing. Uh, we do believe, however, that further simplification and clarification are necessary within the document. I believe the FAA did a good job of clarifying, but maybe can go a little further. So we'll submit some comments to help uh, do what we think will will clarify it even further. And then finally, we want to make sure that they do a little bit better job in the draft of acknowledging that there are three components to the supervisory training and two components to the line service training. Uh, that's the knowledge requirements, the the part that gets taught, right, the, the, the material you need to know, the hands-on fire extinguisher, and then the fire code briefing that each of one of those components can be kind of standalone. You need to have all three, but they don't need to be provided at the exact same time. And you know whether one's provided a month after the other or six months after the other, as long as you maintain continuity for all three, you know, really that meets the FAA's goals. So we're gonna make some suggestions um, in that round. Uh, but this isn't just about you know, what we think. Uh, as a trade association, we want to make sure we're fully representing our members' views, so we really want to hear from you all. Uh, you can easily find the uh, draft advisory circular by Googling AC 150-5234C, and uh, it'll pull up. You can take a look at that. Send us your comments at safetyfirst at nata.aero. We'd love to... Uh, We'd love to hear from you and, uh, and understand what, uh, what's important in this draft uh, comments for you. So that's our views from the ramp quick hit. We won't take too much time. Steve, uh, welcome. I'm sure you're going to be back many, many times here in the next uh, several months as we continue growing views from the ramp. We've got great uh, uh, viewership so far. You know what? Now is an excellent time to say, why don't you pause the video and go down and hit that little button right down here somewhere that says subscribe. Uh, that way, uh, every time we put out a new views from the ramp, you're automatically notified. You don't miss anything important. But uh, Steve, thanks for uh, thanks for being here today. Absolutely, Mike. Thanks for having me. All right, and to all our viewers, we appreciate uh, appreciate your time and check back often. We'll have another views for the ramp. Actually, I think we got one coming out in about four to five days. So uh, I hope everybody has a fantastic day. All right, take care. Adios.